again. Burnout and martial arts. It's ironic, feel the burn, but uh, hopefully not the burn we're talking about today. So burnout is inevitable in my humble opinion. Whether or not you're a dedicated mixed martial artist training all these different modalities, if you're training in just Muay Thai, just Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, just Kali, Jeet Kune Do, whatever it is, you're gonna feel burnout. The good news is that it's normal. It's normal to feel burnout. The question is, why do we feel it? Where does it manifest or how does it manifest? How do we fight burnout? And then how do we prevent being burnt out in the future? So let's talk about burnout. So burnout, according to uh, Google, means feeling empty and mentally exhausted, devoid of emotion and beyond caring. People experiencing burnout often don't see any hope of relief or any positive change in the situation. If excess stress feels like you're drowning in responsibilities, burnout is a sense of being all dried up. So burnout, as it relates to martial arts, can actually manifest a little bit differently. One of the ways burnout manifests in martial arts is feeling cynical or critical about the martial art that you practice. Whether it's like, oh man, uh, you know what? I'm just tired of throwing these kicks. These kicks don't do anything. I'm not turning my hip over, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes it could even be outward projection where you see your friend throwing a kick and you're like, man, he's doing it all wrong. He's doing this. And you're just spending a lot of excess energy on stuff that really doesn't concern you or things you can't ultimately fix. And by ultimately fix, I mean like ultimately like do anything about in the moment. You can always improve technique, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so for those that are unaware, this is called Pop-Up Pirate. Why'd you say for those that are unaware? Like I was like unaware. Anybody's gonna know what this is. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. oh so, never mind. Just... The way this game works is you can take your sword. We have four people. We'll each have a color. I will put that sword in and click it. Okay. And then whoever pops. And then whoever pops, we have to receive a punishment. I'll get Such it. Such as. So we're gonna give a choice of three things. Okay. Tie kick. <laughs> liver hit. Or solar plexus. Boom. Oh God. God. Okay. Who's doing the kicking and the hitting? Oh, uh, we can pick, I guess. This video is stupid. <laughs> Another thing that's a manifestation of burnout is the like just complete exhaustion when you arrive. Like you're jazzed to come, you're jazzed to train, you get here and then all of a sudden you're just like, Mwah. you just literally deflate. <laughs> Another way it manifests is through like no motivation. You're at home sitting on the couch eating chips. You know Muay Thai is coming up in about 30 minutes and you should start getting ready to leave and you just don't. Oh, I kind of hurt my back. Mm, allergies are really, really bad today. I think mercury is in retrograde. So you find all these different reasons and you're overly critical and you just don't want to do it anymore. Despite maybe a few months, weeks, even days ago, you were just 100% jazzed to do it. The good news is, is that's freaking normal. That's normal, especially when you're passionate about something. In martial arts, as I talked about in the Magic Heart video, it is a long struggle bus. You are trucking through a lifelong journey and sometimes those little milestones get lost along the way. But that's easy to say, how do we actually combat burnout? He just put his in, so I guess you're next. So help me if this thing pops on the first try. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> 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 <Let's see. laughs> Nerves. It's like a bad Jenga. Oh. Okay, I get the game now. Uh -huh. Golly, there's like. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> oh my God. I don't, wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I didn't, I didn't really. I didn't actually technically agree to do this. Yeah, right. I did. Oh! You can choose. Yeah. I mean, which, which punishment and from whom? So there's there's actually some there's some meta some diabolicality here. Yes. Because if I say I want a liver shot from JD, yeah, I'm saying JD can't hit as good. It might. So. <laughs> it might be. So. I want a liver shot from Ed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you go. Good shot. So you've definitely diagnosed yourself as having burnout. So how do we combat? Burnout. I'm gonna give you a couple steps here and your mileage may vary on each one of these But I think they're kind of important. The first option here is to taper back meaning sometimes let's say you're training jiu-jitsu seven times a week No breaks just every day. You're rolling hard. Well 
you're gonna burn out. <laughs> Why do I know this? Because I did. When I was going for my brown belt, I was training jujitsu literally seven days a week. But how, Ed? You only have jujitsu on the schedule five times. Well, first I'm a Creonch, so I train multiple places. So I'm rolling here in the Honbu Dojo. I go to train with Eli Knight at Fit to Fight, and then I go to Charlotte Jiu-Jitsu Open Mats, which is the highly recommended. Go to the Open Mats. It's freaking awesome. You're gonna get murdered, and you'll have no idea what rank they are. And I mean murdered in a good way. But anyway, so when you're training seven days a week, like I was, I had a goal in mind. <laughs> and that goal was that damn brown belt and passing that test. Testing in Jiu-Jitsu is a little weird, but the test for this one is basically just rolling and showing your skill in the rolls with multiple black belts and don't look like a complete chump. Look like you're supposed to be a brown belt, whatever that means. So once I got that brown belt, I did number one, taper off. I pulled back so far on my jujitsu training. I went from seven days a week probably to two to four, depending on the week. And I just needed some time. I just trained here at the home with Dojo. I didn't see Eli. I didn't go to Charlotte Jiu Jitsu and it just wasn't a focus for me. I was just like, well, listen, I'm just gonna do it to maintain my skill, but I am definitely pulling back because I was tired of Jiu Jitsu. Seth is next and then me. Guys, it's simple. You just take the red one. <laughs> Put the red one right here. That's it. Come on. The biggest might be in. It might get in trouble. I would get in trouble. I legitimately don't know what you guys are stressing about. <laughs> so he's saying we're all weak. No, just put it in the one that doesn't pop it. Oh. <laughs> you yeah. know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know which one that is. Oh! <laughs> JD with a leg kick. Or leg kick. Okay. okay. God! <laughs> I told you. <laughs> oh, JD, you can't. Ow! Dude, that was a good kick. <laughs> Number two is reprioritize. The idea here is Luckily for me, I train multiple martial arts. So when I pulled back on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I pushed forward in my kickboxing. I went from training kickboxing twice a week to four times a week. Now I didn't immediately go into like seven times a week like I did with Jiu Jitsu, mainly because kickboxing kind of hurts the body a little bit differently than Jiu Jitsu does. Juji Mufu, a fellow North Carolinian, who would have guessed, actually has a great video on life periodization where he takes each month and evaluates his priorities and he puts it on a scale between one and five. For me recently, Jiu Jitsu has been on like a two, whereas my kickboxing has been at like a five or a four. And I'm about to reevaluate things again because we're hitting into a new month and I'm getting really close to my birthday and I wanna make sure I have hot girl summer a little bit early. So taking a look at your martial art, let's say you don't train multiple martial arts, how can you reprioritize things? It's simple. You take an aspect of that martial art and kind of hone in on that. For example, Jiu Jitsu, it's relatively easy. You have multiple positions in which you can work. You have multiple aspects of the art in which you can start to focus. Normally, when I'm feeling really burnt out about something, I focus focus on something I'm good at. So in Jiu Jitsu, I'm fairly good at sweeping people. So I like to work from positions to where you can sweep or reverse people, which is generally the bottom. Also, it's a little bit easier and I'm getting older and I'm lazy, so I like to work there. I'll work from my bottom half guard game and work to sweep and then work my top game. So I get to do two things at once. One, I get to make Jiu Jitsu fun by doing the thing I like to do and then I'm good at. Also working a little bit more to get what it is that is I need out of jujitsu, like working from the top. I know in kickboxing, I worked on areas that I like, which is kicking, but I also knew that I needed to improve, so I made it a challenge. So I had kicking challenge for 30 days. I improved my kicks in 30 days with this one simple trick, practice. If it's something a little more esoteric like Hapkido or Aikido or Karate, you can still find certain aspects of that art and focus and reprioritize. You're getting beat up in Kumite, why don't you work on some Kata? If you're just really bad at Kata, this guy, then why don't you work on your Kumite or whatever it is, right? You can always reprioritize to restructure your desire to train the martial art. There's no chance that it goes on the first one. I would be scared to death if it did. <laughs> Me too. All right, a liver shot or my kick. Really <laughs> and the solar plexus shot too. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think the solar plexus is the only one left, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And that's gonna suck. Uh, I've done that game. game. Yes. Try <laughs> <laughs> I 
thought about that? I was afraid they were popping your chin too. Oh, like, that's fine. It's added bonus. Well, that's okay. I was thinking about your, your chin kick falling, so. <laughs> All right, Indiana Jones. <laughs> Any of those should be fine. All right. Okay. Any of those. Got it. Does that go over here? Oh, that yeah. Dude. <laughs> I like how the odds just get <laughs> forever somewhere. in your favor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like how we're like I'm looking at like I'm gonna know something yeah, about yeah. like the like selection. Jenga, yeah. Like there's no logic to it. Like I think do I need to pick something that's close to something else or no? If it's like, <sighs> oh, 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 oh. so this is the farthest we've been now. I'm gonna run out of colors here eventually. Come on. Except <laughs> they plan. <laughs> There's only like five left. <laughs> I can't see the other side. <laughs> the other side's pretty open. Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole front's got a lot. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's Ed's? I like this game. It's uh, almost fun, guys. Uh, <laughs> number three is the last resort on how to counter, but it's to take a break. Sometimes you just need to take a break from the training. A lot of times I recommend vacations. I like to train on my vacations because I'm crazy, but I also sometimes don't. Like if I go on a cruise, even though I'll work out, I won't like train. So taking a break can sometimes be really, really important for your just entire mind space. But it's a last resort in my opinion, because sometimes those breaks become a little too appetizing. You become overly complacent in not doing the hard work. And then you stop training for a month, two months, two years, five years and then you start to have a whole lot of regret. So ideally, taking a break is a structured thing where you're like, I'm taking this week off, I'm going to Disney with the fam. I'm taking this month off because I have an injury that I need to heal. Whatever the reason might be, taking a break should be a last resort. The next most important thing for how to counterize burnout is have fun. What was fun about the martial arts? Why was it fun? Why, what is it that you do about this specific martial art that makes it so much fun? What is it? Is it getting to hang out with your friends? Is it playing dumb games with your friends? <laughs> is it being able to spar and beat up your friends or get beaten up by your friends? What is it that's fun? And that ties into the next part is you've defeated burnout. Now how to keep it at bay. Okay. Oh, luck. I'm gonna die. There's a lot of math. That's a lot of, that's a lot of person. That's a lot that's, of. I got the left glove hoping it would, it's smart though. I yeah. do, I do get one. <laughs> oh Jesus! I do that. <laughs> so do you want like a straight in shot or do you, like, do you want like a three quarter punch? So now that you've seen this, like, yeah. if you had to do this, comment below, who would you rather take which shot from? Cause I thought the leg kick from JD would be the easiest and that wouldn't I hurt. I knew the leg kick from JD was gonna be the worst. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Why do you? If he doesn't throw a real shot at you, they're yeah, gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna know. Yeah, yeah, so he's gotta throw a real shot at you. Brace, brace and take it. Put him on the floor. Stay right here. Put him on the floor. Yeah, that one dug in. It does. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, that's how you know it's a real one. It should come out the back. If you're hitting it right, it comes out the back. Man, this game was fun. Yeah, it's yeah. great game. I'm, thank you, Ed. And, and you know what's crazy? Is that on the very next one, it's the first one. Oh, man, mm -hmm. that would have been cool. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> What was the point of that? To remind us that it's okay to have fun. Did, did you, you have a good time? time? I had a great time. Yeah. I had a good time. Uh, oh, you didn't get hit either. Yeah, nope. <laughs> Golly. Like I said, fun. Fun is the most important aspect of it. Why? Well, because it works. In my humble opinion, martial arts needs to be fun because you're not gonna wanna do it otherwise. But tying into the fun, you have to define what is fun to you. Whether it's daily improvement, like 1% better. Whether it's monthly goals or yearly goals. Whether it's a competition and you wanna win because winning is fun. What if you wanna challenge yourself and see if you can actually fight in a ring? That could be fun. So you have to define what is fun for you. And I like to do so personally through small goals. My goal, whether it's like a 30 day challenge to kick better, whether it's a 30 day challenge to improve my defense, whether it's uh, just an overall, I wanna make sure I sweep this person. I want to make sure I hit this person with this technique. Everything kind of like conceptualizes into the idea of fun. And that is super important to me. Fun is 
without it, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't own a martial arts school. I wouldn't continue to train in martial arts. I would be doing something else. And that's what you have to basically do is take a look at what it is about the martial arts that you like that's fun and then focus in on that. Because a lot of times burnout means you lost sight of it. You have no idea what's fun about it anymore. Let's say you have to pivot because you have an injury so you can't do the competition you wanted to do. That's okay, fine, you're fun. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a challenge. I'm gonna recover faster than blah, blah, blah did. Or I'm gonna recover and I'm gonna come back stronger. That type of definition of fun is gonna be so important for you going forward. And if it doesn't, then you will certainly burn out and then you will leave the martial arts and that will make me sad. And that's like the main point of it. Don't make me sad, guys. Come on, what's wrong with you? So hopefully this video was helpful on how to counter burnout as well as, you know, just watch Mike, Seth, JD, and I play a very stupid game. My favorite part of that entire thing with them was, uh, wh wh why are we doing this? Because it's fun. YouTube for me kind of became a slog. I would post out content and I knew the content could be better, but I needed, I knew I needed to post. So I would post something and it wasn't great. And then the views and all that re reflected that and that, freaking hurt. So taking a month off, which is again, what does I say? Number three, don't do that one. It's hard to come back, but I had a plan and I had, I had goals and I was filming the entire time. So I was still doing stuff. I just wasn't doing that final part. So that's how I kind of counteracted that. And now I get to make fun content like this. And I wanted them to have fun because they're in the midst uh, or they were just got back from the ultimate self-defense championship over on Rokus's martial, uh, martial arts journey channel. So I wanted them to just have fun in, you know, they get to use their martial arts to beat each other up for no freaking reason. And that's the most important thing for me. <laughs> it's like to have fun and have fun with my friends and get to do this fun thing that we're all so blessed to do and get to train martial arts. Sometimes it can change our entire lives, whether it's financially, if you own a school or you're a champion fighter and you totally, totally changes your life, or it's just a health improvement, uh, a mental health improvement. There's a million reasons why martial Martial arts is good for you. That's not what this video is about. But anyway, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. じゃあこのビデオいいねと思ったら、like button を押してください。もしかして俺の顔をミスしないために登録してください。それとともにあの push notification が欲しいとあのこの bell button を押してください。あそれとともに。ご覧にいただいてありがとうございました。次のビデオへよろしくお願いいたします。パリオン。Subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>